Our salvation is like the scapegoat. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, I've preached on it before, but it's been a while ago where the priest would walk out and place his hands on, the, on, on, a, on a goat that had been chosen. They had, they had cast lots. And he'd go out there and, and it, was, it signified the, the a transmission of the sins of the people on that scapegoat. And then that there would be a man that was fit. That's what the Bible said. A fit man would lead that goat to a, the, what the Bible says, a land uninhabited. And that means, Brother Bill, all the sins is somewhere out there where nobody really knows where they're at. And that's where they're going to stay. And I can't, I can't explain everything, but I just know that our sins are as far removed as the east is from the west. And uh, I'm glad of that. This and I'm thank, I thank God, Brother Bill. I appreciate the good testimony. And uh, I'm thankful that Jesus, He is one that He, 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 uh, I picture in my mind what Brother Bill's talking about. He's a, uh, he come to where you and I was in the mess we was in and saved us and changed us. And uh, then I'm like Miss Vicky, and everything just kind of dovetailing together. I just give him all the glory. Anybody, anybody else feel like testifying something on your heart before we read here? Amen. Nobody. All right. Open your Bibles up to Hebrews chapter number 2. This, uh, I, I'm, I'm kindly nervous. I was hoping there'd be about five or six, seven you know, everybody testify and uh, or, or everybody sing because I'm, I'm kind of nervous because I'm in a position and, and it seems like here recently uh, the Lord's done this quite often and uh, just sort of changed my direction kind of at the last minute uh, and I'm just trusting Him. And uh, somebody said one time, well, you ought to know what the Lord wants you to preach before you ever get up there. Well, you try it for a little while. <laughs> Amen. And that's what I like to, in my mind, that's what I, I think when people, you know, that's never preached a day in their life. God ain't never called them to preach. But, it, but it's kind of like, you know, people that knows the least think they know the most. Amen. And so I'm just trying to trust the Lord. I'd come in tonight and I was going to preach on something entirely different. But I want to read, if I don't do anything else, but just read and brag on the Lord. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And, and the, the, these verses came to my heart as uh, Miss Vicky was singing the song about Beulah Land. And Hebrews chapter number 2, uh, look with me at verse number 5. Verse number 5, the Bible says... For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man, thou visitest him. Thou madest him, talking about the son of man, a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Now you know how I feel about the book of Hebrews. I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews is the only ep uh, the epistle that Paul wrote to the Jew. But Paul, if that be the case, the writer here, he says that uh, you and I have a special place in, in, in the heart of God. Boy, that's hard to imagine this evening. It's hard for the human mind to comprehend that God would uh, take so much pride in you and I knowing what... Uh, kind of mess that you and I individually have made and uh, the mess that mankind has made all down through time. But somewhere uh, in God's heart is a place that only humanity fits. Amen. The Bible says that there's some things that you and I 
are going to get to experience. Now, I can't run all the references. I'm just uh, hitting the high points on these verses and, and try to get down here uh, to, to the thought. But uh, the Bible's letting us understand here in, in Hebrews 2 and 5 uh, that, that you and I, we're, we, we're, we're held to a special place, even more special than that, the angels. Now you, you realize as we sit here tonight, we think about angels being a magnificent creature and a cre the creation, yeah, and, and they are. They are. It's amazing to me uh, how that uh, God and, and the Word of God, uh, let, let me say it like this. You'll remember over there in the book of Isaiah where it talks about them seraphim that cries day and night, holy Holy, holy. Ain't that what they say? Now, now the angels, they, they don't know nothing about being saved. They don't know anything. And I'm talking about a first-hand experience. They don't know what it is to be in a place where they was in need of a Savior because they were created beings. And besides the one-third or, uh, that uh, Satan took with him, the rest of them has just always been there. And God never did make a redemption plan for the angels. Y'all ever thought about that? God never did make a plan to get them angels back up in heaven, but he did for mankind. But them angels, Brother Bill, they cry, holy, holy, holy. They do that day and night. But what the Bible say? And we just strictly going by what the Bible says on this. They have wings. The Bible says, with two of their wings, they cover their face. With two of their wings, they cover their feet and their legs. And with two, they did fly. And the Bible says they do that, how often? Day and night. They cry, holy, holy, holy. Well, you know what they're doing? They're worshiping a God. They're worshiping the Lord. They're worshiping Christ. And they've never seen him. Y'all ever thought about that? And Isaiah, those angels, according to the scriptures, they, 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 they're able to worship and praise a God. They praise the Lord who they've never seen. Because if day and night they keep their face covered up, their eyes have never looked at him. And if a, if a created being that knows nothing about redemption and nothing about the shed blood of the cross of Calvary can worship the Lord day and night. How much more should you and I be willing to sacrifice our offering of praise unto God? You say, well, we ain't never seen him either. No, I've never seen him by my natural eye, Brother Ron, but I have uh, experienced what salvation is. I have uh, uh, been forgiven. I have... Uh, uh, experience God's grace and God's mercy. I have experienced some things that the angels know nothing about uh, and so have you if you've been saved uh, and uh, yet there's so many times that we're afraid to, to really praise God but there's only one people, one group of beings that ought to praise him, and that's, that's humans, humanity. Brother Bill, them angels, they, they've always been there. Them seraphim and them cherubim, they've always been there. And they fly around night and day worshiping God. And yet here we are, we're placed in a position where the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that thou art my... But it goes on to say, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. And then verse number 9, But we see Jesus. Now here's, here's what made, made it possible for you and I to be able to sing the song Beulah Land. This is what made it possible for you and I to be able to sit here tonight with a Bible in our lap and Jesus in our hearts. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, 
crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Boy, I tell you what, people get hung up on that, don't they? They get that confused, that every man. I'm thankful that when he died, he died for everybody. Amen. I'm glad they wasn't just me, and it wasn't just you, and it wasn't just us, but it was all. That God, who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But, but God allowed his son Jesus to be made a little lower than the angels. In other words, that God came down to our level. That God left because you know Christ was God in the flesh. He was willing to leave the splendors of the glory world and fashion himself like unto man. And he became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And, and brother, that is what ought to energize us to want to worship the Lord and not only worship him but to do something for him. Offer up a, a little bit of praise or be willing to do whatever it is the Lord wants. But anyway, we, we, we're going to travel on down through it. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom all things are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and he and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Y'all get what the Bible's saying right there? He that sanctifieth, he that cleans us up, and we that are cleaned up are all the same. Man, that's mind-boggling. That is, that's, that's something hard for the human mind to comprehend that the man that done all the saving would look at you and I with such love and mercy that he would be willing to say, you are, what, what did God say to his son? He said, you're bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And, 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 and throughout the scriptures, he, uh, God the Father and God the Son, they're viewed as, as one and the same. But here, we're viewed as one and the same with the Son of God. Boy, ain't that amazing tonight? I mean, when, when, and scripturally speaking, he says that the sanctified and the sanctifier are all one of in the same. I'm reaching for a cup that ain't there. And the Bible says, for both he that sanctified and he that sanctified are all one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Now here's, here's the thought, and this is probably going to be Logan's shortest message of all times. Uh, since I've been at Solway. And don't get used to this because it probably won't happen like this too often. But I want to ask you this, and I find the thought here in verse number 11. The Bible says that Christ is not ashamed to call you and I brethren. He's not ashamed to uh, be one in the same with those that he has sanctified. And we know on in other scriptures, he that sanctified to them, he sanctified, he called to them, he called, he justified to them, he justified, he glorified. And uh, you know, you've heard me say this so many times that you and I that are saved by the good grace of God, we're as good as in Beulah land as if we was already there. And uh, we've got all these benefits and these privileges and and, uh, you know, we're living in a day where uh, individuals in the world, they want to talk about privileged people and, and the benefits that others. I want to say tonight, I'm glad uh, uh, as a child of God, I have been privileged and I have acquired some benefits that the world don't know nothing about. Amen. But they can get in on if they want to. Yes. Amen. I'm not, I'm not for listening and I'm just going to say it tonight. I'm not for this thing floating around critical race theory and I'm not for uh, white 
supremacy. I'm not free of that. We all flesh and, and bone and, and every different group of people down through times done things wrong. That's why Jesus Christ came to save everybody because we'd all messed up and made mistakes. And I believe, listen, there are some benefits he's showing us. And then there's the fact that we are in a, held to a special place in God's heart. And then it gets down there where it talks about he's not ashamed to, to, to identify with us. But the question tonight is, are we ashamed to be identified with him? Amen. And I, and I got just a few different scenarios when we leave outside the walls of the church, are we afraid or ashamed to be identified with him? I'm talking about the one that's seated at the right hand of the throne of God at this very hour, this very moment. The Bible said he's not ashamed of you and I, even though we've made mistakes and we've messed up and we've done all kinds of things that's contrary to his word. He's still not ashamed of us. Boy, ain't that amazing? If I look back over my life in just the past week, I could find enough for uh, uh, things that I've done wrong for God to, I could understand for the son, of, the son of God to be ashamed of me. I mean, we don't use that terminology much in modern day society, but if you ever watched Little House on the Prairie, I haven't, but some of y'all have. I've watched Barney Fife a lot, and I love Barney Fife. But back in the, in the older days, you know, if a child got in trouble, I believe I've heard Andy tell uh, Opie, I'm ashamed of you, boy. If you've ever messed up, you know, that was, that was a comment. I've just meant I'm ashamed of you. Why? What would possess you to do such? But according to the scriptures, he has never been ashamed of you and I. Man, ain't that amazing. I mean, I, I, the sanctifier and the sanctified in his eyes and in his mind are one in the same. Now that don't mean that he ain't never been angry with me because uh, the Bible does say those I love I rebuke and chasten. But we got a good heavenly father. He's never been ashamed of us. He might have had to take us out back every now and again and straighten us out, but he's never been ashamed of us. What about you tonight when we leave and we're outside the church? Are you doing everything that the Lord would have you to do? Or is there areas of your life where we, we're almost as if we're closet Christians in a sense where we're afraid to really be the person or the people or uh, the man or the woman God wants to be because of an aspect of a sense of shame like we're afraid secondly and this is really what I want to share with you is what about in the house of God? I mean, I'm talking about right in here when we come to church. He said that he's never been ashamed of us. Not one time has he ever been ashamed of. He's not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I, will I, will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I, the children which God hath given me. He says there's some praising going on in this, this text. There's, there's a, a, a sense of, if I, if I could say it like this, I see a mental picture of a church service where people are not ashamed to worship the Lord, to praise God, to uh, to draw closer to, uh, to him, there, there, I believe sometimes we come to church. Now, I may be wrong because I ain't no prophet. I don't know your heart. 
But I believe sometimes we come to church and we don't do the things that God really wants us to do because there's an area where either we're afraid to or we allow shame. When in reality, you say, preacher, can you break it down and just really, can I just say it like this? We've got some talented people in the church. Amen. Don't wait on me to call on you to do something. If God lays it on your heart, why do it? Amen. I'm for whatever the Lord wants you to do. And I, I believe we are to unashamedly, when we come to church, I mean, listen, if God, and I will get on to, to folks, one thing I can't stand, and it'll show up on you eventually, is people say, well, I gotta, I gotta testify. And they're out somewhere in left field. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all been in them services, and they ask the bed is bad, or they say, I've got a song to sing. And it, it, you know, it's, it, the, the Lord ain't in it. Now, but if the Lord's put it on your heart, I want you to, I believe we're to have a mentality when we come to Solway Baptist Church, whether it be Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, we coming in to worship God unashamedly. I mean, without any, listen, I, I real, and then I believe there's times where the message is preached and, and then it's time to do business with God. And sometimes we're ashamed to really get down and do business with God because we're, we're fearful or frightened or worried about what somebody else might think. Now listen, I, I know y'all probably think I'm real old-fashioned and some probably going to disagree with me, but, but these are steps so long as you're coming from down there to up here. The other time, the, this is what we've dedicated, or, or at least this is what I view as the altar of the church. And I believe that, listen, all through the Bible, Old Testament and New, I believe there's just something special about being unashamed to slide out of your seat in front of God and everybody else and, and make your way to an altar and pray. And you say, well, preacher, I can pray uh, from, yeah, you can pray from the rooftop if you want to, but there's something special. Uh, and I believe, listen, you'll leave feeling better if we, if we get to the place where we're not ashamed to just have church. Because he's never been ashamed of us. And the writer said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. They're, this, this, this person, they're, they're ready to go to church and they're ready to have church because they're unashamed to do so. In other words, the Bible teaches you and I, grieve, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed under the day of redemption. I believe it's possible to come to church and, and folks, you know, grieve the Holy Ghost and, and people not do exactly. Uh, we come in with and we halter the Spirit of God up rather than just coming to church and having service unashamedly. I mean, if you feel like testifying, testify. If you feel like, but, but, but if you feel like singing, sing. If, if you feel like the Lord's laid a word on your heart, why? Share it. But too many times I believe in life when we really look at this, there's absolutely no reason in the world why we ought not to come in to church every time the doors is open ready I mean for a revival style type of service. I mean every time we come to, because listen, when we realize who we are and what we are in light of the scriptures, we've been placed in a position where we're, 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 we're special in the eye of God as it relates, he relates us to us and, and, and the angels. And then it talks about how that salvation was brought through Jesus Christ. How that God made him a little lower than the angels. But then he gets down there and he says he's never been ashamed of us. But yet we, and I, and I think sometimes it's a personal thing. I think sometimes a personal 
uh, personal, um, uh, what is that? Well, you know, your personality uh, plays a part. You know, if you've, if you've spent the whole week feeling like you failed the Lord, and then you come in here on, on Sunday morning or Sunday evening, and you, you drag in here and thinking, man, I've made a mess of it. Well, join the crowd every one of us has. Amen. 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 We've all messed up. Sometimes, I mean, and you know, there are weeks that if we being honest about it, there's some weeks go by, you mess up big. I know that, you know, people say there's no big sins. Little sins. I believe there are some differences and some degrees to sin. Disagree with me on that, but you can't convince me that your dad wouldn't always whip me with a hickory. Sometimes it was just a swick, a swift smack over the seat into the back seat you know, just to kind of get my attention. But I never will forget, I had one of them power wheels. I might have told this story, dump truck, power wheel, dump truck. And I'm just going to be like, this ain't been live stream. We record my, but I'll share this. My mom and dad, they were, in case you didn't know, they, 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 they've had their share of problems, and they were separated at the time. And I was at dad's, and... Uh, and uh, Papa Wade, y'all have never met him. He come outside one day, and, and I was riding around the yard on that power wheel, and I pointed that thing straight down the hill. And there's a big old, big old hill right off down into the bottom. I'm talking about, I, I had been eyeballing it for about an hour, and I knew I wasn't supposed to. And I pointed that, that dump truck down that hill, and, and, and and Papa Wade told me, he said, you better not go down, because there's a road at the bottom of it. The road was at the bottom. He said, you better not go down that hill. I turned around and I said, well, you ain't my boss. And down that hill I went, and I had a time. Brother Ron, I'm talking, I had that thing sliding sideways, and it was coming back this way, and man, I rode it all the way to the bottom. That was a, that was a thrill. And about that time, I saw Dad coming out. He had no shirt on, a pair of shorts, and he was grabbing at every limb coming down the yard, every, every tree, trying to get one to break off without stopping. And Buddy, he did. You know how it is. He grabbed that thing, and he raked them leaves off of there, and he whipped me from the bottom of that hill all the way back to the top. Now, I said that to kind of be comical. But at the same time, Daddy never did whip me the same. What makes you think God's? I, I, I realize there are going to be some weeks, some days, some times when you just mess up big. And, and it's those times when you've messed up big, you come into church and you think, man, I can't do nothing. I ain't got nothing to offer God. I, there's nothing that nobody wants to hear from me. God's not going to use me no more. God, and, and we, 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 just, we, we get to the place where we, we might as well, and I thank God for faithfulness. But y'all ever just come to church and in the back of your mind you thought, man, I should just stay at the house. Am I the only one? And I'm the pastor, mind you. These times I've got up here and I thought, well, I should just stay at home this week. Let Brother Scott and Brother Terry take care of service. I've been there. But you know what we need to remind ourselves? When we come to church, he's never been ashamed of us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, move on and have church. Amen. Un unashamedly have church. You feel like saying amen, say amen. If you, di if you agree, uh, if you disagree, then just, just don't say none at all. <laughs> but listen, here in the text, is that my alarm? That's, it's time to wrap her up. I, I am close. I am coming to a close, but I believe one of, one of y'all's vehicles alarm is going off. It could be somebody's vehicle outside, but we're closing anyways. And the Lord said, silent. Anyway. But listen, I know we've been we've, kind of comical. But listen, I believe so many times we come to church and we've allowed the the cares of this life to consume us to a place where we don't, we don't worship, we don't praise, we don't sing, we don't, we don't get involved like we should because we're stifled by all of our problems. I believe sometimes when we leave outside of the church, we live in sort of a secretive Christian life. 
where we, we really only do the things that God desires us to do on, when it's convenient. But listen, He's never been ashamed of us. So why in the world should we ever be ashamed of Him? And I'm thankful tonight that uh, of, of the truths that we've been uh, that we've been made aware of this evening, not only through the scriptures, but I am thankful that I'm going to heaven. Not of my own accord, but, uh, but because of him who loved the, the sanctifier. I'm glad I'm sanctified. But I love you this evening. I just wanted to try to encourage your heart. As we stand, we're going to be dismissed. I'm not going to give an invitation. And there are times, listen, that uh, we allow things to get in the way. There's... There's times I allow the old devil before I even get done preaching, before I even uh, get through with the message, the old devil will come by. And, and it may be, it may not be the devil. It may just be, it may just be horrible preaching. But th my wife, she says yes. <laughs> but there are times where before I even get done, the old devil will come by and say, man, you wasted your breath. You wasted your time. Nobody wants to hear you no more. Oh, yeah. But he's never been ashamed of us. So we just keep on keeping on.